the last three years, I've realized that like this is my biggest contribution to the world. Like I want to be the person who can make mistakes and talk about them online. Yeah. I want to be that that vulnerable. portal, vulnerable, but that yeah, that portal into just like humanity and just like I have fucked up so much in my life. I want to embrace our our, our humanness and, and not try to always project this like perfect lifestyle. Um, that I probably have in the past where relationship was not doing very well, but had to show it, you know, it was good. I mean, they just keep going at this point. What are you blowing? Wild to me. I, I guess I was telling Kevin, Thursdays are the day that the landscaping guys come for our apartment complex. Allegedly. And, allegedly. And evidently, today's Wednesday. And they've been here for an hour and we've been just been What time did on they the get couch. here? Let's just say an hour. Okay. For dramatic sake. <sighs> I'm like out of breath for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you did the whole setup. I know. I just sat here looking pretty. Like, I'm ready. Well, honestly, someone needs to look pretty. Thank you. And it's got to be you. Thank you. Uh, I was taking a compliment even before you directed it at me. <laughs> Sorry. I, I sometimes <laughs> just like ignore what you say. Okay. Where should we start? Where should we begin? Well, I feel like we oh. should begin with like. No, go ahead. Well, I don't think people. I was going to do the. Oh, sorry. I'll just keep interrupting you, I guess. I know. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Mansplain. Um, no, I was going to say, I don't know if people know who I am. So maybe I should like, <laughs> say hi. That's That was such an adorable thing to be like. <laughs> Do people know me? I was like, I mean, um, yeah, you're you're Kevin Norman, the the infamous gay book talker. Yeah, that's true. And social media personality. True. Um, so yeah, Kevin Norman, everyone. Hi. I'm gonna I'm gonna add some cheers right here, so people. Um, but yeah, Kevin and I have been friends <clears throat> since 2016 or 2017. I really want to tell the story of how we met because it's a very memorable thing. We we actually bring it up from time to time because it was just It's a funny. good story. Um, let me introduce it and then you can finish it. Okay. So Which version are you going to give? Uh, the only version <laughs> that exists. Uh, I'm teasing. So there's only one. There's a there's a, uh, a rock climbing gym called Hollywood Boulders here in Los Angeles. And I started going to it as soon as I moved here the first time in 2016. And maybe Question. My, yeah, Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. How long were you living here when, you, when I saw you at that gym? Maybe three or four months. Oh, shit. It's very fresh. Okay. I, I'd realized, like, once I moved to L.A. that, like, rock climbing was, like, the cool, hip thing to do. And I was like, True. well, I'm cool and I'm hip, so I got to do no, <laughs> So I got to do things. So I go there, and um, maybe my third or fourth, third or fourth visit, okay. this, this, like, smiley, young-looking <laughs> twink walks up to me just with a nice, gentle hug. His head is kind of down, just ready to hug me. And I was like, okay. And I yeah, hugged him back. Such, like thinking back, the weirdest, the yeah. weirdest approach. But it, look. Yeah, um, it led to friendship. It did. Yeah. I had watched your content um, mm. previously. And I was like, in my mind, you were kind of like the only YouTuber I really watched who was mm. queer. Um, and so I was like, okay, if I ever run into this guy, I'm going to give him a hug, like as a sign of a thank you. You were about to leave and I was like, okay, now's my moment. And I don't even think I thought, I just like walked up to you and gave you a hug. I was in a relationship at the time. You were single. I was single. Yeah. And now it's flipped. Now yes. you're in a relationship and now I'm single. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we just had good chemistry right off the bat. I felt like it was just comfortable. Yeah, it's, I think I would say it's really easy to speak with you. Um, because I feel like you and I can talk about deeper things that maybe I can't with most of my friends. Sure. So it's refreshing. Yeah. I would say 2016 version of me was like one of the hottest versions of okay of myself. That but is I was, that is like such a strange thing to say. But but I was like I think I was. We'll talk about it more. But no, I, no. Actually, I want to hear it now. No, what? I was like. Why do you say that? Because I was like really fit. I was very confident. It was the first time I was like living on my own in the major in a major city. So yeah. I like felt like the world was my oyster and I felt good, except I'm happier now than I was then. Right, right. But you had like the, the young, youthful swagger about you. Yeah. 
and now yeah. I'm like an old man. That again, that you felt comfortable to like walk up and hug a someone, someone that you follow on the internet. 24, 25, that age is such a, that is a, just a hot age to be. Yeah, I mean, it's like. That's what I think too, not to interrupt you, but that same time, 2016, 2017, I look back and I'm like, I was like really feeling myself then. Yeah, I've looked back at photos and I was like, this is probably not good for my mental health. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> But I'm like, at least I yeah. have these saved for like yep. when I'm really old and wrinkly. I'd be like, damn, look at that body I once had. Look um, at that body. We should address like what this is. I mean, Kevin and I, what is we, this? we sit around and we're like, yo, should we do a podcast? Should we do, uh, <clears throat> what, what form of content can we make together? Because uh, we, we just have fun with each other. We have fun chatting. And, uh, and we're both creators, so. Yeah, yeah. So we like think in the form of writing content like this. And um, so yeah, we're just gonna start making some videos like this where it's kind of an open discussion platform. Uh, and we'll go from there, but. Yeah, I'm also curious to see what people would be inclined for us to talk about. Mm. Um, although I've made a very extensive I, list. I mean, yeah, I mean, we've already kind of prepped for it, even though it maybe doesn't seem like it, but I mean, we have, I'm looking at a, uh, a Google doc here that um, credit to, to Kevin to put together, uh, which is great. I love it. We have, uh, I thought we could just like do a fuck, Mary kill in the middle Let's of this do it. video right now, just because I just, because I'm a single horny bastard and uh, we got to find you someone. Listen, I'm not looking for somebody. I just, uh, I think single people are probably, they tend to be a little bit more, they run hornier than like the average. I mean, listen, <laughs> you, you're having, yes, you're like, having steady I, I have action. A, yes. Okay. So it's like not. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is, this is my way of like enjoying life right now. Okay. So shut the fuck up. Great. Um, shut it up. All right. Fuck, Mary kill. We have. AI generated Timothy Chalamet. Okay. 1980s Harrison Ford. Oh. Or Papa Pedro. I'm going to kill Timothy Knew Chalamet. Um, daddy issues. I don't yeah. know. No, it's fine. Um, I'm going to marry 1980s Harrison Ford Good and call. I'm going to fuck Pedro Pascal. Now, why, why fuck Pedro? Um, because my favorite movies growing up were Indiana Jones. And so if okay. I can spend a lifetime with Harrison Ford and get that D all the time. Yeah. I'm gonna Especially take 1980s, it. 1970s right. Harrison Ford. So I'm going to take that. Pedro yeah. Pascal, also hottie, but yeah. I want to spend my time with Harrison. To me, he seems like such a gentleman. He seems like he'd be sweet. He would, but it's funny in the, in the context of the game though, most people would choose the fuck to be the most wild right. of the one destroy my whole type thing. yeah absolutely yeah the whole destroyer <laughs> but but pedro i think he's gonna be gentle with you i could guess yours sure go for it i feel like you would marry timmy fuck harrison and kill pedro i would kill harrison ford oof okay. yeah i mean he's really cute there's something about pedro that is just like is just wonderful Okay. I just love him. Did you watch The Last of Us? Uh, of course I did. It's amazing. Yeah. Did you play the game? No. Oh, even more amazing. By the <laughs> way, this Fuck, Mary Kill I do once a week on my Patreon. So if you want to be a part of that, go over there and have some fun. But no one asked me where I got this picture of Timothy Chalamet. I wasn't. I it's would funny. not have known that was AI generated until you told me. Right. But then but also, part, where? Well, that was my other question. I was like, when? Why the hell is Timothy? Why is he doing this? <laughs> why is he? Why is Timmy doing this? But shit? why is he not doing that? What? That's the question. Right. Oh, so last night at the gym, I was talking to a buddy uh, that guy I just met. Yes. And I was like, why are Twinks so hot right now? They've. I think <laughs> are they're. They? I think they're just always hot. here. This is my thing. Okay. My theory is that twinks are so hot, like Troye Sivan, Timothy Chalamet. If you think about it in terms of like male, female audiences, most of the gays are down for twinks. Yeah. All the women are down for twinks. Yeah. Not all, but well, it surprises me. It does surprise me. Like, like I, yes, I agree. I agree. Well, I have a friend who has a twinky boyfriend. Um, I just met her. Yes. Yes. And her boyfriend so. Is but I, oh, you said oh, her boyfriend is cute. I don't know. I also knew a girl in college who was like, I want a very f effeminate man. And I was like, sure. Interesting. Okay. Like, I feel like we're so conditioned to think like women want strong, bulky, masculine men. Lumberjack. 
and masculinity. Now they love Timothy Chalamet. That's interesting. Is it because of the toxic masculinity? Probably. If I had to get, well, maybe. Like, I'm not going to speak for. For the whole. For. All of women. All of, yeah. Um, mm. But possibly. Should we do the other one that's on here? Yeah, as let's well? do it. Uh, to kind of test our theory. Uh, so the next one is going to be a, a young Hugh Grant. Okay. Uh, Mahershala Ali or Steven Sanchez. That's a, little, that's a little tougher, I feel like. Uh, you go first. I went uh, first last time. Okay. Um, I would probably fuck Steven Sanchez, marry Mahershal Ali, and kill Hugh Grant. I would do the exact same thing. Would you? Yeah, that oh, was yeah. exactly my... Also, Steven Sanchez, you can have your little Twinkie boy fix, but also Mahershala... He's straight, though, right? He, uh, well, I mean, they're all straight, aren't I they? I mean... Straight. Yeah, straight. The new uh, True Detective with Mahershala Ali. Okay. Incredible. Oh, he's in just, um, the Netflix Julia Roberts End of the World one, correct? He is, yes, Great. yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're just staring at the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of men, dating. Yeah. Okay, in what context? Well, like, what do you think the dating scene is for queer people right now? I think dating... Um, in general? In general for everyone, male, female, gay, straight, is a challenge. I think meeting new people is a challenge. I think it's tough to give people a chance and also to give yourself a chance to be loved. We're so addicted to our, our screens these days. And I don't know, it's like everyone says that, but it's the fucking truth. I mean, and it's true. my problem is, Kevin, is that like, I will be on Instagram looking at literal models. And then in the same breath, I will go over to Tinder and then I'll be like, wait, I think it's like, is it cognitive dissonance? Is that right? I don't know if that is. I don't know. It's probably to... wrong, but okay. I say a bunch someone of correct wrong. us. Some, please someone correct <laughs> me. But you get my point. Yeah. It plays with your head. It's I fucked up. I remember years ago reading an article that was basically about like the paradox of choice and that mm. relationships are harder nowadays because there's so many options. So if one thing goes wrong, people just go, oh, there's like a million other people out there. I don't have to work towards this. I don't have to fix it. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, which then goes back to my point, which I've told you before, is that love is a choice. Mm. And so when you do fall in love with someone, you're choosing that person and that love every single day. And it's not always a feeling. So I think when it comes to dating, to give people chances and get to know them, which I know is it seems like you're hard. directing this right at me. I uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But finish your sentence. Sorry, I cut you off. No, that was that was pretty much it. Um, well, yeah. which to talk about like dating in general, I agree. I have girlfriends who are like dating is so hard, dating is so hard. So like everyone I've spoken to, it seems to be like the consensus. Um. But I'm not on dating apps, so I don't know how they currently are. Sure. Um, but I can't imagine much has changed. I mean, you tell me. Are you on them? Yeah. I'm on Tinder mostly. That's where I get like most of my matches. Okay. Uh, most success. I've probably been on like three or four Tinder dates uh, in my lifetime of being on Tinder. Uh, like and like since you moved back? or. Um, a couple in Indiana and then two out here okay. so far in LA. Um, and it sounds, it sounds kind of mean to say this, but um, say it. sometimes I'll use the dates as a form of practice. I, I'm just practicing like getting in the habit of going on a date, just doing it, going through the steps and making that feel like a, a possibility for my brain. I don't think that's mean at all really because isn't a date just a practice towards the relationship sure like, i'm just i get really like hard and sensitive on myself for no like, reason at all you're like i'm a terrible person because i went on this date kind of yeah no yeah which i know is the wrong way to do it i just it's complicated for me i you know i i sometimes just get really emotional i'm getting kind of emotional right now about it let honestly. it out um well what what is bringing up that feeling? I, I don't give, I don't give myself a chance to be liked or loved. 
with making new friends is easy because we're not on a romantic plane. But when I'm when I meet somebody that I'm interested in more than just friends, I get nervous and I I pull back super fucking quick. And I know I don't make myself available to them because I'm like, oh, this person is not gonna fucking like like me. Um, so but again, that's that's a portion of it. That's not how my brain operates every day. It's tough, man. I'm working on it. I'm working on it in therapy. I'm working on it uh, just with myself. But it's we've talked about it. It's hard. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a way for you to protect yourself. It's ultimately a fear of rejection. Yeah. And so you kind of push them away. So you're like, if I'm the one to leave, I yeah. can never get hurt. Yeah. Um, which I don't want to hurt them either. I know, but I don't I, want anyone to get hurt. I think which that's is not a realistic. Yes, I, I know exactly. it's, it's not, it's not realistic to go into it expecting, you know, both sides are going to be happy at the end, but coming off of a relationship that really did a number on me. Um, I've, talked to some people in the last three and a half years, you know, casual dating. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just tough, man. I just, uh, I need to keep working on it. I mean, as so. I told you before that, like, because your relationship was so public, I think that's an element to it that most people won't ever have to deal with. And yeah. I think it also, because of that had invited people publicly into the relationship sure. and now also in a way into the breakup. And so it's, it's interesting. And I commend you for doing all the steps that you need to do to work towards it. But I get why it would be hard and scary and yeah, yeah, that's normal. I also am the one who turned the light on and invited them inside as well. You know, like it's, it's my job, it's my career. So I'm partially to blame for, so it's all his fault. Documenting my life so closely uh, and involving my relationship uh, and my breakup. But the last three years, I've realized that like this is my biggest contribution to the world. Like I want to be the person who can make mistakes and talk about them online. Yeah. I want to be that that vulnerable. portal, vulnerable, but that yeah, that portal into just like humanity and just like I have fucked up so much in my life. And more than you guys even know. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to embrace. I want to embrace our, our, our humanness and, and not try to always project this like perfect lifestyle um, that I probably have in the past where relationship was not doing very well, but had to show it, you know, it was good. I think what you do, um, basically like the vulnerability, all of it, letting people in is so good, which is what I also try to emulate in the content I create. Not to the same extent, we do very different things, but um, I get it. And I was, I was like, like I told you earlier with how we met, like you really helped me in the time that I was kind of coming out and figuring myself out. Mm. I'm sure you've done that for a lot of people. Um, yeah, like keep doing what you're doing. For sure. <laughs> I'm going to, as if yeah. you needed my approval. But. No, I. It feels nice to get that like validation and support from you, because I I love you and I value you so much as a friend. I love and value you too. And yeah, the the one thing they never teach you in school or anything growing up is that people come and go in your life. Mm -hmm. That that was a really tough pill to swallow for me. I still struggle with it. Do, it's yeah, hard. It's, it's fucking. It's sad. Shitty. I mean, you. I know recently had some people yeah um go. yeah my best friend of like 13 years 10 years 11 12 years like we just reached a point where it's like uh, i think we're not growing in the mm. same direction yeah and i think it's beneficial for us just to take time apart um but i don't know how much time that'll be or what that'll look like um it's it's hard and i think i want to just like hold tight to people um but as I've gotten older, I've realized like the people who are meant to be in your life will be. I think of this quote from a movie I've never even seen, but it was mm. in the trailer and it's always stuck with me. And it was basically like um, they basically said, I think he wanted somebody else to be there. And the girl was like, yeah, but we're the ones who showed up. And so I always think of like mm. the people who show up for you 
that's your circle. Um, and I think a lot of times I, a lot of people will hold out for like something better, like a better partner or a better yeah. friend or a better something. So you push aside people who are actively trying to be in your life. And I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. Um, and so I think just being aware of it has really helped me. And then like this year I was like, who do I want in my circle? Who's actively trying to be in my circle? Mm -hmm. Let's make that happen. Well said. Thank You've you. always showed up for me, like every time, every step of the way. You were a big part of, uh, you, you got me through a lot of some, some shitty times. Uh, did the last I? last couple of years. You did, yeah. Uh, just, you didn't know, you know? I called you when I was super lonely and fucked up, and I probably didn't say that to you, but, you know. Yeah, he, he never you, said that to me. You, you did help me. But back to what you were saying, it's kind of that, what was the paradox thing you talked about? Decision something? Oh, choice. paradox of choice when it comes to yeah, dating? Yeah, it's, it's, that like kind of applies to friendships as well. Oh, for sure. We kind of assume that it's like, oh no, okay, well, I'll what? make a new friend, don't worry about right. it. Right. When I, see, this is, this is my brain. This Wait, is, this I, I want to see is where my, your brain's This is going. my fucking problem, dude. I overthink I mean, everything. And this I'm should working. just be called overthinking. <laughs> When I'm talking to someone or I go on a date with someone, I my question to you is... To me or the person you go on the date with? Uh, to you right now. Okay. And the question I ask myself, how will I know? I asked you this last weekend, but... It makes me think of Glee. <laughs> you know, and, and it sounds so fucking... I'm like such a romantic person that this is the way romantic people think we're like oh will sparks fly will they literally fly out of my fucking ass when I, I meet this person how would you know if this is the person that you should really open yourself up to is it going to be obvious or is it, are you going to need to like put some work in to really know does that make sense Can no it, it totally right? makes sense okay. i'm just like now crafting a response in my head um because i totally get what you're saying i think i spend a lot of my life being like oh it's thunderbolts like you should feel butterflies right away. Yeah. And anytime I've ever felt that with a guy, it ended in utter chaos. Like mm. I would lose myself. I notice when I feel that feeling, I'm not being me. Mm. And so my current boyfriend now, um, when we met, I was like, oh yeah, he's cute. But I didn't know, I wasn't like head over heels. I didn't know where to put him. Um, Whereas in the past, I think I was always like so quick to put people in a box. And he was someone I was like, he's nice. He's genuine. Let me get to know him. Sure. I got to know him five years later. Um, here we are. And so. Your boyfriend's amazing, by the way. Thank you. Um, yeah. Dan's the man. I'll tell him. Uh, and yeah, I think it's just giving people a chance. Like obviously there has to be mm -hmm. an attraction and some form of a connection. But yeah. I don't. I don't trust instant love, and so. Kevin is a is a writer, and you're a poet, truly. Like every time we meet, you hand me like a handwritten, hand typed on a typewriter <laughs> poem, and uh, there are just times when I am reminded of how your brain works, and you're just so. I just love the way you, you speak. Sometimes it's really. Yeah, it's it's very. It's just nice. Thanks. Yeah. I like my brain feels crazy. So it's funny. Your brain helps my brain make sense of the world. I love that. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Glad to help. Yeah. Well, on that. Don't note, cry. Before I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this new year has gotten me feel super emotional. I don't yeah, know about but you. I think crying's like your body just like letting shit go. Yeah, no, I fight it. Yeah, you shouldn't. Because I know, I know, I know. I like you're to gonna more. like be a monsoon and flood out. I know. They, I make this joke with my therapist that I'm a Virgo, so we plan our cries. <laughs> so like when I have therapy every Thursday or every other Thursday, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna cry Thursday at 12 p.m. Great, looking forward to that. I, but I don't know how you operate that. like that. I could not. It's it's not healthy, but you know. Anyways, um, I feel like this was like fucking. A therapy session for me You're a welcome. little bit um i will send you a bill thank you i'll fucking throw it away <laughs> like, you're like i'm not paying that. this is friendship bitch <laughs> so um 
well, thank you. I think this first episode, this first video went well. Um, let us know in the comments if you guys like Kevin. If you never want to see him again, um, just let me know. I hope you guys like me. And um, uh, yeah, what's not to like? You're you're great. Thanks. You're very likable. Thank you. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Peace. Should I say bye? Well, yeah, let's do, let's do love you. See you. Bye. Okay. Love ya. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.